Do, do, do. Start my timer. There it is. Got my coffee. trip was lovely there's not a ton that's exciting about a road trip to uh oh thank you kathy to fargo it's really flat um hello dawn but i will say that paul my road trip buddy had to pedal to the proverbial metal we were flying and i'm only gonna say that now that we're safe and we didn't get pulled over knock on wood johnny law we evaded Johnny Law, which was great, but it was pew, pew. And then also, look at my friend Brian gave me this ring. It's a rainbow ring. I'm curious about your hat. Flat, to go with your flat files. Sometimes, nine times out of ten, I like to take my bills and really crunch them. Crunch them. But this hat is a flat hat, and I like it a lot. What up, Jackson? So we drove to um, Fargo, and I was like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Another hour! Ah! But finally we got there, and we go to this place, and it looked a little bit creepy at first, but then it was fine. Just a couple of folks heading out, hanging out there, and uh, I screwed up first. The first thing I screwed up was she's like, okay, you're paying with cash, right? And I was like... Oh, I didn't bring cash and she's like I told you in the Facebook message and I was like oh no so I was like can you take a check I'm an honest person and she's like yes but that's not how Facebook market works and I was like I don't know this was my first Facebook market purchase but then the cool thing was she's like would you like a kitten and I was like what is this what am I being punked what is this some kind of a joke I would like to look at the kittens and certainly pet the kittens. I don't know if I want to take one home. But so we went back to the office and we looked at kittens and they were terrified of me. So I didn't even get to pet them. And then I said, I will not be taking one home because they're horrified by the sight of me. So no. But it was kind of funny. Then we loaded up the thing, the flat file, in the back of the car. And then we drove home. trip I allow myself to have some very very bad food Emmett wants you to have a kitten oh Emmett hi from Eli what's up Eli Eli brought me the book taps in the back um, yeah, meow, meow. but uh, so so when we start the gas station I'm like I'm gonna pick the worst possible food mixed with the worst possible soda because I try to be a healthy person, you know, I'm old, I can't be eating like you kids. So, I picked out my very favorite bad food, Original Doritos, and Diet Dr. Pepper. Whoa, it was so amazing. You know how fast I ate that entire bag of Doritos? I had orange dust all about me, all over my fingers, all up in my grill. It was wonderful. Bad food, Mickey D's. I did, we did not do Mickey D's. I came home for dinner, but I had Doritos. And, um, yeah. Good morning from Tahoe, folks. Uh, yeah, so the flat file's awesome. Fits perfectly under my table. Super jacked about it. It's clean and in good shape and worth $275. So I feel very good. Um, I also got a big order from Uline. 
have you, Maya? What does that mean, Eli? I still have this other book that you brought, but I haven't read it yet. I'll maybe read that one tomorrow. Room on a broom, because you know what I'm going to read today? Today I'm going to read Iggy Peck Architect, because I like these books a lot. Remember, Will gave me these? And then if there's time, Tombo Bombo. Okay? So um, I also went around to all a bunch of little small businesses today and did some little videos to promote... Chowtown Bingo! If you're not playing, you should, because it supports a bunch of cool dudes. Look, there's me. Beep, boop, beep. And there's Local Blend, where I got my coffee. And there's Milk and Honey Ciders, where I drink all the rosé cider that they have, because I love it. Oh, hug, Parker says hug. I can't wait till I can hug that little Parker. It's going to be the greatest day. Room on a broom. Okay, so let's read this little guy. Beep, boop, beep. I've got all my t-shirt mock-ups, and they're going to be going up on my website, on my Facebook page. So if you guys want them, you got to chime in. Because then I'll order them. But I'm not going to order them unless people really buy them. Because I've been burned by that before. We are playing. What are you playing? Okay, who's stoked about Iggy Peck Architect? Oh, yes. Right, right. Here we go. Okay. Oh, the recycling dude's pulling out. It's pretty cool. You know, those garbage dudes are pretty cool. All right, ready? We need a 2T and a 6X. Okay. Julia is watching. Ready, set, Good day, here we go. Young Iggy Peck is an architect. He, and has been since he was two, when he built a great tower in only an hour with nothing but nappies and glue. Good gracious, Ignatius, said his mother. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But her smile faded fast as a light wind blew past when she realized those nappies weren't clean. Ignatius, my son, what on earth have you done? That's disgusting and nasty, it stinks. So what he did here was he made a leaning tower of nappies, which nappies are diapers. And some of them are quite full to the brim and leaking out juices. So that's ever so disgusting. And Kitty Meow Meow is like, Meow Meow, bleh. That's pretty gross. But, and there's his little tushy, and he's very proud. And his mother's like, wow, that's great. Also, it's disgusting. You know, you, you do with what you have, you know, the tools you have. And all he had was dirty nappies. So, boop, boop, boop. Oh. Peter's on. That's all right. But Iggy was gone. He was out on the lawn using dirt clods to build our great sphinx. Okay. So, there's his mom. Iggy, what are you doing? And Iggy's like, I shall build a great sphinx. There it is. And the neighbor's like, Hey, dude, we're just trying to lay up by the pool and have a cocktail. And Kitty's like, I shall be your muse. So that's pretty cool. When Iggy was three, his parents could see his unusual passion would stick. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples and temples from modeling clay. Whoa, that dude is talented. So he's like, Look at this little church I built to peaches. And who are those little dudes right down there? Meow, meow, meow. And then he's like, and there is a big, great, uh, what is that? I don't know. Some type of a temple. And then there's another temple filled of apples. And the kitty, meow, meow, is like, I'm going to hang out in here. Meow, meow, meow. And the parents are like, yep, he's got skills. He's amazing. Alyssa, what's up? At dinner one night, to his father's delight, Iggy got a bright gleam in his eye. And out on the porch built the St. Louis Arch from pancakes and coconut pie. Wow. And if you'll notice, he built one for Kitty Meow Meow. Meow yeah, Meow Meow. And then the dad's like, Dang, son, that's amazing. And the kid's like, Yes, Dad, I will put the coconut pie on top of the grate beautifully built sculpture. 
I have a green finger. <laughs> That's awesome. Dear Ig had made it until second grade when his teacher was Miss Lila Greer. On the very first day, she had this to say. We do not talk of buildings in here. Gothic or Romanesque, I couldn't care less about buildings, ancient or new. She said in her lecture about architecture that it no, it had no place in grade two. Well, she's very, uh, she's very tightly wound with a very tiny waist, and tossing books in the garbage is not acceptable. But all the kids are like, ah, hey, look, there's the token ginger. And all the kids are like, oh, wow, that seems so aggressive. And he's like, but teacher, look, it's all my talent. And the kids are like, She's really miffed. I don't know. That might seem severe, but she was sincere. For when she was no more than seven, she'd had a great fight at a dizzying height in a building so tall it scraped heaven. On an architect's tour of the 95th floor, young Lila got lost from the group. Oh, she's got a traumatic experience in her past. Don't we all? I understand then we can be a little more empathetic with her. Maybe she's not just being mean. She's got something going on deep in her brain. Okay? So. <laughs> no, no. Comments are good. They're the best. We don't delete comments in this situation. All right, see? There she is. Oh, I'm sad and alone. It is scary when you're separated from the crew. You know, but usually if you stay put... Someone's gonna find you, so just relax. Don't be hiding, don't be running off, things like that. She was found two days later, what? In a stuck elevator, eating cheese with a French circus troupe. After that day, it's quite safe to say she thought of all building lovers were nuts. As a teacher, she taught that above all, one ought to avoid them. No ifs, ands, or buts. Okay, so that is an extreme case. To be lost for two days, and then to end up with a circus troupe that feeds you cheese. I mean, I already thought it was traumatic, but this is 10 times as traumatic. But look at the kitties. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. And they all have cheese. I wonder what that cheese is all about. Looks like it's a brie. That's a lovely cut of cheese. There's a helicopter and there's a dog on a bubble. Robin, my friend. As you might guess, it would cause Iggy stress to hear such terrible talk, but he didn't hear. He sat in the rear while building a castle of chalk. You, Iggy Peck, your desk is a wreck. Tear down that castle right now. You will not build in here. Is that perfectly clear? Do you need to see Principal Howe? Okay, so that's amazing. He made a, a giant castle out of simply just chalk, so he has a great brain. There's lovely architecture. A lot of windows, looks like a great castle. And there's the kids. There's that crazy ginger. Hey, what's up? I'm trouble. And then what's this guy got? Something on his head, a little something. And then, you know, all the kids just chilling and she's like, I told you to listen and you didn't. So I will threaten you with the principal's office. You know? No, ma'am, said Iggy. He lowered his head and his heart sank down to the floor. With no chance to build, his interest was killed. Now second grade was a bore. <laughs> he does have super sick hair though. Beow! And he's wearing Converse, lime green Converse. Iggy Peck is a stud, but he's bored now. His teacher is not gonna challenge him. There he goes. After 12 long days that passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Greer took the class to Blue River Pass for a hike and an old-fashioned picnic. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Maybe she's not so bad. All right, so they're like, da, 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 da. I have cool hair. She's a little bit emo. And he's like, I have a crazy ginger. And they're all like, da, da, da. well, she got braids. She's got some clips. That guy's got a weird thing on his head. Ooh, she's pretty hip. Look at those earrings. She's like, I'll carry the thermos. And they're like, yeah, I'll bring the picnic basket. Ba, ba, da. She's got a little neckerchief on. Neckerchief, so lovely. They crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of a bubbling stream. But they no sooner passed than the footbridge collapsed and Miss Lila Greer started to scream. Ah! 
ah, we're trapped here. Oh my, alas, kids, goodbye. Her eyeballs rolled back in her head. She dropped to the ground with a vague groaning sound, luckily fainted, not dead. Okay, as a teacher, you cannot be this dramatic. You know, that is just like, calm down, teacher. It's not a good leader. She's fainting, the kids are standing around, Iggy Peck is like, bored silly. The birds are like, oh great, that bridge is broken and all the things are in the lake. And uh, what's happening over there? More birds, ah! So that teacher needs to get the gal out The class was amazed. They stood there quite dazed, uncertain of what they should do. But one bright young man was hatching a plan which started with Miss Lila's shoe. Soon each lad and lass were there at Blue River Pass. They were working together as one. Okay, so Iggy is like taking the lead. All right, dudes, take a shoe. You guys, get that tree. All right, get the shoelaces, take all the shoes, get a bunch of sticks, get more shoes. Here's the drawing. The bird is hanging out. The ginger will help. Everyone will make a long line and we shall fix this. Everybody's working together. I like that. Teamwork makes the dream work. And when she came to, Miss Lila Greer knew that something quite brave had been done. She looked in the air and saw hanging there a structure with cables and braces. And on the far side, beaming with pride, were 17 smiling young faces. Trees, boots, tree roots and strings, fruit roll-ups and things, some of which one should not mention, were stretched bridge to, ridge to ridge in a glorious bridge dangling from shoestring suspension. Well, all be darned. Okay, so let's see what we got. So she's waking up from fainting because she's really not built for it. I don't know. She lost points with me because she didn't rise to the occasion, but these kids rocked it. Okay, so we got shoelaces. The birds are having a little parade. There's fruit roll-ups. More fruit roll-ups and strings. And dun-dun-dun! Underpants! There's always underpants in a good kid book. There's the ginger back there hiding. And all these kids are like, We did good, teacher! And you slacked off! And Iggy's like, Yes. Would you like to change your idea about architecture now? Yes, I think she would. It all became clear to Miss Lila Greer as she crossed that bridge over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than spend your time building a dream. Mom. Okay, so she's over her trauma, being lost when she was little, and she's quite fashionable, and she's missing a shoe, and that bridge, that's a nice drawing. Iggy Peck is indeed an architect. Now every week at Blue River Creek Elementary in second grade, all the school kids can hear, along with Miss Greer, how the world's greatest buildings were made. The weekly guest speaker in t-shirt and sneakers talks of buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course, he's the guy who builds towers from pie, that brilliant, brilliant young man, Iggy Peck. You know, I'm telling you, the kids teaching the adults, I can get behind it. Look at that. He's got numbers and feet and leaning tower of Pisa and uh, pyramids and his sweet, sweet hair and his super cool shoes. That's amazing. Sometimes adults better listen to kids or you're going to be in trouble, mister. <laughs> you know? Okay, so I had to try to figure out who won the book. So I had to go back to all of your silly little comments. So we had Jackson had blue and green. Shelby had white. Ed had green and white. Deb had blue and pink. Okay, wait, let me... Let's see how I did this. Uh, Rachel had pink and yellow. Christy had blue and orange. Liv had purple and red. Emmett had red and purple. John had yellow and blue. Heather had purple and red. Christy had green and blue, Laura had blue and pink, and Sloane had purple and yellow. Okay, so I picked pink and orange. Okay, and then I picked red and blue. <laughs> so what that means 
is that, uh, how, how was I going to pick a winner again? Um, okay, so no one actually picked any of the combos. No one got red and blue. Lots of red and purples. Uh, let's see. I think what we'll do is the winner will be, so pink and blue, is there any pink and blue? No. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So what we'll do is we will say that blue and orange was what Christy picked. So the winner is Christy Hansen. Okay, it's a very complicated process that you won't understand because it's very interesting. So Christy Hansen, she had a third name, which I didn't write down because I only had a little tiny piece of paper. But Christy Hansen is the winner of this book called Waiting Isn't Easy, donated by Sarah and Haley, our friends, and also Amy. So, do 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 Awesome. Rainbow time. So, good job, Christy Hansen and a third name that escapes me. Hello, Haley. I'm glad you're in the house. Um... So I think starting next week, I'm just going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay? Is that cool? What up, Dan? Um, just because I feel like it should be like, you know, pulled back a minute. For lunch today, my friends, well, actually, I already ate my lunch. I ate it early because I didn't have any breakfast. And I went to all the places. And I went to the local blend, and I they had these little sandwich on the go and I was on the go and I was hungry so I got a uh, backwards bread bagel with turkey and sprouts and maybe some other things there may have been onions which I may have pulled off because I do not like raw onions I think they're quite crunchy and quite disgusting but I did eat all my sprouts so I feel quite energized and strong so that's lunch and we got the winner Haley, I think you are nice and kind, you know? I like kid comments. I think they're the greatest. Oh, I know what I forgot to show you. Um, I, beep, boop, boo. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, this gal, her name's Erin. Is Erin watching? Erin, are you watching today? You might not be, but Erin made a portrait of me and put it on Instagram. So then I had to share it because it's quite lovely. And I'm going to show you. I guess she's sending it to me. Yeah, you won, Christy Hansen Kohlberg. We won. Yippee. See more. I can't see more. Yeah, you won. So you'll have to message me your address. Okay, so this is what she made of me. But I think she's sending it to me. So I'll show you it in its reality. But for right now, I'll show you digitally. Ah, it's a portrait of Mary Bruno. And look, it says what up dudes and then it says meow 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 and then look i got glasses on oh no oh, went away what am i doing great scott blast okay ah don't stupid phone okay i can't there it is there it is all right so it says quarantine story time with mary bruno and that's hilarious so thanks aaron you're a great artist it looks just like me See my nice white teeth? Whee! So that's hilarious. Hilarious. Because it's both funny and heavy. That she would take the time, touches me greatly, makes me warm in my deepest heart. So thank you very much. All right, let's check the timer. 24! What? Okay. What was the other book I was going to read? This one? It is like a little kid's book. I know, we're not little kids. We're like, you know, big kids. But sometimes little little kid books are fine because they're cute. <laughs> you know? Okay. So no judgment. This is called Tumble Bumble by Felicia Bond. Okay. A tiny bug went for a walk and he met a cat and stopped to talk. Look at this guy. He's just like, dee -dee -dee, dee -dee -dee -dee, and the cat's like, meow meow. Bugs in books are always cute, but in reality, not as much. 
They fell in step and strolled a while and bumped into a crocodile. The crocodile grinned wide with glee. These are unlikely friends. Oh, let's go check out this crocodile. Hey, dudes. What up? You guys are little. Want to hang out? Heck yeah, we do. Yeah. Sounds good. Come on with. You know? Then introduced her friend, the bee. Oh, man. I love bees. So now he's sitting on his shoulder. He's sitting on his shoulder. And they're all buddies. And then look at that bee. Aw, he's so... He's so fuzzy and cute. I can't hardly stand it. They began to dance a jig and bumped into a baby pig. Oh man, I've always wanted to hang out with a baby pig. Look at, I got you by the little hand. Oh. And look at him, he's so happy. Ra ra ra. And then they're like, dee dee, ba ba boop ba bee. And then the pig's like, oh snap. What is that? Chop cake? And they're like, we're just dancing. We don't even know. You know? Oink! He squealed. That was my tail. They apologized to no avail. So the crocodile sang him a song. As she sang, they bounced along. Oh, Don't step on my tail. That's a regular bee. A nice bumblebee, not a murder hornet. He's just a bumbler. And that guy's like, Oink, oink. And they're like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. I didn't see your tail there. And they're like, hey, I'll scoop you up and we'll just start jamming away at some tunes. Yeah. I like to be held by a big scaly gator. Or crocodile, whatever. Zigging, zagging down the road, they bumped into a big green toad. They're just so happy. Look at them. La, 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 a boop, bop, beep, beep. Rabbit! <laughs> they startled the toad and then scared a mouse who bumped into a yellow house. Whoa! 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 Bear. Ah! Pew. Okay. A lot of tumbling. They kissed his head and then rang the bell. When no one came, they said, oh well. So they're just gonna bust in, they're gonna bust into this house. They're just like, hey man, let's just go in there. It's not even locked. So if you don't want a bunch of animals walking into your house, you might wanna lock your door. And tippy toeing on 14 feet. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, correct. So they're like, be quiet in case they're home and sleeping. Okay, okay. All righty, you've got it. Roger that. Yes, yes. I don't recommend breaking into homes, but it's a kid's book. They looked for something good to eat. Tumble bumble up the stairs. Whoa, they raided this joint, and they found so many good things. So they found this one's being like, I shall have some cereal and a glass of milk with some flowers. And these, this little guy's like, I will eat all the donuts. I love donuts. And then the mouse is like, pizza's my favorite. What is this from Gary's? And then they're like, oh, pretzel's so salty. And he's like, oh, chicken wings are my favorite. And what's Piggy eating? Oh, I found cookies up in the hiding spot. Sweet. He's like, I made a giant bowl of ice cream. I made a big old mess. Chocolate sauce, nuts, oh, fing little feet prints. And then they're like, let's take a boring upstairs because we made a mess and our bellies are full. Let's go upstairs. Okay. They opened doors and checked for bears. And in one room, they found a bed. I'm really tired, the crocodile said. So they're like, hey, you see any bears in there? I don't. All right, it's safe. Yeah, I'm sleepy. Me too, me too, me too, me too. Let's go in there. That bed looks super comfy. Yeah. She stretched out long beside the bee. The toad hopped in, which made them three. <laughs> Look at them. Yeah, that guy, look at that guy. Squish. And then this guy's like, hey, make room for me. Boing. Then, then came the cat, yawning big. Behind him was the baby pig. The bug came next and last the mouse. Oh, they're all sleepy. <laughs> oh, I'm sleepy. I'm sleepy too. I'll shut the door so that we have proper coziness factors.
Okay. All squished together in someone's house, and this is where the bugs walk ends with eight. Uh, so they're all squished in there. Yeah, <laughs> look at that little guy. They're so cute gators in the middle with his little feet sticking out. And then they're like, hey man, you guys got room for one more? Sure, dude. Okay. I've always wanted to have friends that are all kinds of different species. You know? Uh, no, nine. No, ten new friends. Look who came in. I heard you guys were looking for a bear. Well, it turns out I'm right here, and I need some cuddle buddies. Oh man, I just got home from Little League. You guys better move over. Sweet! We get to snuggle with the kid. Woohoo! <laughs> Hooray! We're gonna dance a party and have a snuggle party up in all those blankets. Woohoo! All right. That was pretty sweet, don't you think? And it looks like the timing is just perfect. Again, I've got it down to a science. You like my ring, Andy? Um, Brian gave it to me. I think it came off of a cupcake. Ha ha. Da, da, da. I'm eating sandwiches for lunch today. What sorts of sandwiches are you eating? PB and J. Thank you, Rosie. All right, let's get some gumballs. And I'll give away another book Wednesday again. We'll give away another book, okay? So the winner has to tell me where you live, and I'll send it out. I still have to send out some stickers to the other people that played, but I haven't got my stickers yet. This is my favorite way to take a break in my day of teaching online. Thank you, Mary. You're so very welcome, Kristen. You're so very welcome. Wait, oh, gumballs are way over there. Somebody didn't, somebody put them away over there. I lost my pennies again. Ugh. Where did I put my pennies, man? There they are, same place that I got lost yesterday. Okay, so if you win today, I'll send you stickers when I get them, but I don't have them yet. So, but you have to win the exact combination, unlike this was sort of a hodgepodge. Okay, so we'll try. Green and blue. Lisa says green and blue. Pink and green, Parker. PB and J. Oh, PB and honey. Yum, Haley. Emmett says white and purple. Okay, ready? Wait, let me get this right. Okay, ready? Here it comes. Oh, double blue! What? That's amazing. That is lucky times 48. So that's cool. Okay. Haley says red and blue for number two. And it rhymes. I didn't even try. Oh, red and blue again. Orange and blue. White and blue. Fibbing colors. Blue and yellow. Jackson says yellow and pink. Ugh. So what do I always do with the orange? Chuck it. Chuck it in the bin. Chuck it in the bucket. Because orange ruins my gun. Okay. So, no winners. It's okay. We're all winners. For real. Take my flat hat. Go get some work done. What's today? Thursday? Tomorrow's Friday. We'll have another couple good books. And then next week it's going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay? I'll show you some other stuff I did. Alright, you dudes. Have a good day. Watch out for my fingers. It's about to poke you. Bye, dudes. Love you all. Good day.